All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to By God's Grace. Here's an interview with Victor and Salta. So please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Victor Havel, otherwise known as Victor and the Salter, Catholic YouTuber. And I will leave a link to your channel in the description below. So let's get started. Um, how did you discern your vocation as a Benedictine oblate? Well, I think uh, maybe people need to know what a Benedictine oblate yes. is uh, first. So the Benedictines are a monastic order in the Catholic Church. Uh, they date back to the uh, 5th century. Uh, Benedict of Nursia founded them, and he basically left a, a worldly lifestyle and became a hermit, and then uh, some people began to follow him, and then he started what is known as the Benedictine uh, community, and it, it grew and grew, and uh, they've had all kinds of reformations, but one of the things they had also was lay people who would stay at the monastery for extended period of periods of times or who would try to live the, the monastic rule, the rule of St. Benedict in the world. And those people became known as oblates. I, as far as I know, they go back to the Middle Ages. Uh, so because people were so far away from each other at the time, uh, lay people who would travel to the monastery would stay and then live like the monks for a period of time and then go back and continue following the Benedictine rule in the world. And they're called oblates because they they, like an oblation, they offer themselves to God uh, through the rule. Uh, and so it's a way to live a monastic lifestyle, or live the rule of St. Benedict in the world, whether you're married or single. And uh, so that's basically what it is, just a lay person trying to follow the rule of St. Benedict. And that means pr praying the divine office or the liturgy of the hours, uh, I, I pray all eight hours, but the uh, some people will just do morning prayer and evening prayer. Um, and that's it, just trying to live the Christian life to the full, but uh, through, uh, within the scope of the Benedictine tradition. Yeah. yeah. Right. How has the divine office had an impact on your life as a Benedictine oblate? It has a, a major impact because uh, it helps me offer up every moment of my day to God. And it, it helps me remember that, yes, we have responsibilities. Yes, we have duties in this life. But ultimately, our number one duty is to worship God, that prayer itself and worship is a work. That's why it's called the divine office, the divine work. Uh, our, it reminds me of the, that we don't work, we don't live to work, but we live, to, we work to pray. We work to, we, 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 we should spend our, any spare time we have worshiping. And so the, the divine office helps me always turn back to God throughout my day. And that in, in turn affects the way I behave on the job. It makes me work harder. It makes me uh, focus on the essentials. And it helps me become more aware of uh, everyone's needs. So I work as a lower elementary school teacher. So it, by praying the hours, I begin to go into a rhythm of prayer and work, prayer and work. And I feel like I can uh, connect with the students on a deeper level because they, they're each little temples of God. So yeah, it doesn't work all the time, but it, well, another thing it does, it helps me realize just how sinful and how fallen I am because I might have a bad day. I might have a, a tantrum one day and be impatient with the students one day, but then I have to go back to the, I have to go back to the divine office and repent for that. So if you make a mistake throughout the day, uh, praying the divine office gives you an opportunity to repent and, 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 and allow the word to transform you so you can start over again, start over again after you finish. Yeah. How has the Psalter had an impact on your life in general? Oh, it's impacted everything. The Psalter, it being the Holy Spirit's prayer book, Jesus' prayer book, a divine prayer book, in my opinion. Uh, and it, 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 
it, it reaches us on many different levels. On the purely historic level, it's a, the prayer book of Israel. And then as, as baptized Christians, we are part of the new Israel. And so we continue that link, that covenantal uh, bond with our Jewish ancestors spiritually through the prayer of the Psalms. But also on a spiritual level, the, the Psalms are the prayers of Christ our high priest. So every time we pray them, we are praying the words that Jesus himself prayed as while he was incarnate and as he continues to be incarnate in his glorified state. So it has a rhythm and uh, a sequ uh, an order to, the, the Psalter has a rhythm and a, 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 a sequence to it such that if you pray them continually, you, your life begins to follow that sequence. Your life begins to follow, it, your life eventually becomes saturated by praise, by worship, to where I know when I do the entire Psalter, uh, which is hard to do, but it's worth it because when you do it, you, your mind gets so full of the Psalms verses, the verses from the Psalms that whenever you're going about your daily life, it's almost like uh, the prayer continues automatically. The spirit continues to pray within you throughout your day. But it takes a lot of prayer to do that. It takes a lot of self-denial and purification because uh, it's so easy to get distracted and to let the world interfere with your prayer. Yeah. How did you discover the, the first discover the divine office? It wasn't until 2004, so I was pretty late to discover it. I always see, I always saw priests praying some kind of book on a regular basis, but I had no idea what it was. I thought it was just a prayer book that only priests could pray. I never really asked, but I noticed every now and then when I would visit my priest, he would sometimes have a black book in his hand. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a Bible, but I uh, found out it was probably him just praying his office. And then when I went to seminary to become a Benedictine priest, uh, it was required for seminarians to own a copy of the Liturgy of the Hours. And so that began a whole new epic, a whole new era in my life, because I had no idea that the church has been promoting this prayer for so long. And that we have access to this continuous prayer, it, that it doesn't just have to be Sunday Mass, but the Mass can permeate your entire life yes. through the continuous prayer of the office, that it is the official, and I had no idea that it was the official, the officially promulgated prayer book of the church, and I wish more Protestants knew that because they think that it's all about that we worship Mary and all this, but the, the official prayer book of the church is actually the soldier ultimately since the the, yeah. the, the, the the divine office is 80 to 90 percent all psalms so yeah. that's, that's that's where i first discovered it was at seminary cool um what interests you about the soldier what do you find interesting about the different ways of praying soldier for me it's 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 proof that the holy spirit is real um because if you'll notice, every, almost almost every Christian tradition, whether it's Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, they each have their own unique way of praying through the Psalms on a regular basis. Yeah, I just I was I was looking I was doing some research on antiphonal um, chant and prayer, and I was I was pleasantly surprised to see that there. I, I ended up at a Baptist church's website, and what they do sometimes. They don't call it antiphonal prayer. I think they call it like community prayer or something like that. Some new term for it. But they they literally uh, trade stanzas by praying the psalms in the church, uh, yeah. and they do that as a form of deliverance prayer. They they see it as a form of the protection from the devil. So they it is true. I mean, I, we can get into that later. But in other words, the the Holy Spirit is bringing the psalter to so many different people and so many different ways on, in ways that they can connect with it because I had one uh, subscriber tell me, why, well, why worry about the way other people pray the Psalms? Why don't they just pray the Liturgy of the Hours? And I said, well, not everybody's ready to 
adopt a Catholic prayer book. They're going to think they're going to see that name Catholic and they're going to think, well, I'm not praying that just because it's Catholic. The bias is still there. But when you see that the Holy Spirit still reaches out to people regardless of their biases and, and, and gets them to pray the Psalms, whether it be through the Anglican Book of Prayer, whether it be through just opening up the Book of Psalms and praying it, even the the, the evangelical Christian group, the New Gideons, the, the people who leave Bibles in hotel rooms, uh, their mini Bible, their little tiny Bible that they hand out to people has the New Testament and the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. So yeah, it's very complete and very compact, but you can see that the Psalms play a clear role in our, our response to God, our, our response yeah. to his word. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite psalm tone included in the Christian prayer volume? Oh, that. Uh, I had my here is. I like the I like the Phrygian note a lot. The one that has that half step in the beginning. So that would be psalm psalm tone. Okay, where is it? Ah, here we are. So I like uh, Benavo Tone Six because it's Phrygian. I right. love that half. I love that half tone between the tonic and the supertonic. Yeah. Uh, um. For me, yeah. For me, I actually like the first Benavo tone. It's really yeah. up there. Yeah, that's okay. I guess because the um, tone six has more of a Coptic kind of sound to it because of that half right. tone and half step. Right. That is it. Is it gives it that dark mystical quality that the Coptics have. Yeah, it's been my new. It's it's my new fad. It's a new fad I'm going through. New phase. Yeah. But yeah, they're they're all they're all very. Good. Another one I like a lot is the the Mixolydian uh, mode one, the tone four. That has a very triumphant sound. Yeah. Yeah, I love using that that mode a lot because it has that major second under the seventh. I mean, under the tonic. Right. Yeah. So tone tone four and tone six of the Benevo tones, probably. Yeah. What's your favorite Gregorian psalm tone, if you have one? Uh, probably eight. Probably tone eight. Yeah, because that's, that's the one I'm most familiar with. Even uh, I was, I just heard uh, the Lutherans actually use that too, because they they, they early the uh, the more traditional Lutherans follow the uh, Gregorian chant tones. Yeah. Yeah. And as for me, I'm familiar with it because in the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, um, tone eight and tone two are basically the only tones that are used. Yeah. For most of the psalms. Say that again. So in the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, tone two and tone eight are the uh, are the only ones that are used for the right. psalm. And so. Yeah. You'll only find an antiphon in either tone two or tone eight in its uh, few variations. So it's probably the most the typical the most typical Catholic psalm to tone eight. It's the one most people probably heard, uh, including me. I, yeah, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of lazy. I, I, sometimes I'll just stick to, uh, to what is it, tonus rectus, the straight, just using one tone. Yeah, uh, because I. I I got to the habit of doing that after watching 
I don't know if you've seen the, the, the documentary called Into the Silence. It's about the Kamaldolese hermits. Wait, are they Cistercians? Are you sure? I think they're new. I think they're Kamaldolese. But um, but did you you know you know the documentary I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, into, yeah. Into, yeah. Have you seen it? No. Nope. It's watch. for free on YouTube. Yeah, it's for free. It's really it's really awesome. You get to they they still live like the like the Kamaldolese lived way 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 back when. Uh, wow. It's, it's a yeah. They show everything. Their chants. Their they, they, what their life is like even in, in the cells uh yeah you can find them on youtube uh that, that movie you can find that movie on youtube into the great silence so that's where i first started uh get, becoming attracted to the ultra minimalist approach of just choosing one tone and going with it especially if it's somebody who's not a singer if you're chanting with someone else um like my son i started chanting with him uh when we when we pray night uh prayer together before bed and so I'll just do tonus rectus with him. Yeah, uh, it's so cute because he has that high pitched voice, so it's it's really cute. It's a good way to get people started. Yeah, it's an easy way to get people started, and then when they're a little bit more advanced, then you can introduce them to song tones. Yeah, and also it 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 it, uh, it makes you think about the eternity of God, the fact that there's only one tone. You know, God is simple. God is eternal. It brings yeah. about the concept of God being eternal. And I remember there was an interview with a, a Greek Orthodox liturgical composer, and he was explaining that the reason they used that single tone as a, as a drone, uh, while someone else chants a melody above it, is because they're trying to, the, 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 the changes, the, the melody that changes is like the change of life that, that represents man, right. the imperfections of life. But the drone at the bottom where they go, oh, that's supposed to be the eternity of God. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. So there's a theology behind the way the notes are written uh, in Greek Orthodox. I'm sure it's like that in other uh, traditions too, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And I've even um, experienced it with Gregorian chant. Like whenever I'm singing mass, like they'll usually, um, they'll be, um, like one part of the choir will sing the melody and then the others will just drone. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's one thing I really like a lot about it. Uh, it's, it's, if you're singing, especially if you're chanting with someone else, it's really fun to have someone hold the drone while someone else sings the melody. It's powerful. Yeah. Um, what did you think of your experience at the Maronite Monks of Adoration, especially in regards to the Divine Office? Oh, yeah, that was, I was spent... I did about three visits to that monastery. Uh, well, one thing I admired about that place was they keep it very simple. They said they didn't, they don't want it to become this huge commercial endeavor. It's actually just like maybe eight small cottages and then a chapel way out in a field. It's very simple the way they, they laid it out. And uh, I didn't find too much difference between the way they pray the office and the Benedictines, except that some parts, of course, were in Aramaic. Of course. Yeah. But uh, as far as the, the tones, the, the times, they were about the same. It was pretty much the same. 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., yeah. 6 p.m., 7 p.m., uh, 9 p.m., and then back, back to midnight. Yeah. Um, so I didn't see, but what struck me most was uh, hearing Aramaic, that was really pleasant because it's a language of Jesus. So yes, we uh, it's, it's it's a real treat to hear that. But also, I was surprised that uh, there was only like one person there who was actually of Lebanese descent, and he was American Lebanese. So he was the only one there who uh, even had uh, who was originally Maronite. Everyone else had uh, moved over from Rome, the Roman Rite to the Maronite uh, right? Yeah, literally. That's what I'm praying about too, because um, basically everyone at St. Charles Monastery in Punchbowl, Sydney, they're basically all um, of Lebanese. They're basically all Lebanese. And so, oh, yeah. yeah. And like, if you want to know the way that they pray the office, just, um, just check out their channel. I will leave a link to that in the description as well. Yeah. If everyone is interested. So, yeah, so usually 
Um, of course, like some of the integral parts, like the Trisagion, will be in Syriac, but apart from that, it's all either English or Arabic. So yeah. What was really rewarding was uh, I was I stayed there stayed there for Christmas Eve, and I stayed I stayed there a few days. I spent my Christmas there because my wife was in Indonesia with the kids, so I was alone that Christmas. And I, uh, so I spent that Christmas with the monks and it was a totally different world. Uh, I'm used to having Christmas, you know, with family and Christmas tree and all that, but there I spent that at the monastery and for the uh, Christmas vigil, I remember they did a lot of the liturgy in Aramaic, a lot of the chants were yeah. in Aramaic. It was really beautiful. It is beautiful because like, it's like that at St. Charles every Sunday, um, they'll do like, not just the main parts in Syriac, but they'll also do like the um, the fraction and elevation um, right. in Syriac as well, yep. which is awesome. So yeah. I'm hoping if I get a chance, I'm definitely going to go down and uh, experience it for myself because other than being a monastery, they are a parish as well, which yeah. I find a little bit strange because... Like, why would you have, like, a monastery and a parish in the same building, you know? Yep. Does it make sense? <laughs> well, that's, that's just it. Uh, I think it's because the, the Lebanese community may not have uh, a, a church and a monastery there to serve them, so they put everything together. Yeah. So they don't have to travel too far to serve the Lebanese community. Yeah, it makes sense. Now that I think about it, it makes sense, yeah. Because you wouldn't want people, Lebanese from, say, Melbourne, having to travel across the entire continent to uh, uh, Sydney. Put, just put it all in one place, and then uh, it becomes sort of a, a, a city center, a divine city center for yeah. the uh, Lebanese community. And yeah. I remember the great thing about the Maronites is uh, with, there's, they're in union with Rome, so there isn't, it isn't like you need all, you, you don't need to go through all the rigor morale of being crispated into the right to receive Holy Communion, you can go straight to communion and, and still receive because they're still in union with Rome. Yeah. Like, that's true. And, like, basically for all the big feasts, like Corpus Christi and stuff, they're basically the main, um, the main church that does all the processions and stuff. Like, wow. this, um, this past Thursday um, for Corpus Christi, um, the local Melkite uh, priest actually also consolidated the Quidorna with them, which is like, I've never seen that. Like, yeah. that's really awesome. The Melkite priest, you said, did that? Yeah, that's great. Well, I guess they can because Melkites and Maronites are still they're still considered part of the the Catholic Church. Yeah. So it's not like it, it's not like they can't con con celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's another thing. If you ever, if you ever go into Massachusetts, there, there, I was actually quite active in the Melkite community as well. Uh, in uh, Mathern, Massachusetts, there is Saint Basil's, Saint Basil's Seminary and Monastery. They have a small Melkite community there. Right. Uh, I was, and they they host the Corsillo retreats. Have you heard of Corsillo? No. Nah. It's kind of a charismatic thing. Uh, a lot of Catholics, uh, they. They'll go, uh, they'll separate the men and the women and the men will stay like in a, a dorm house. And it's, it's a lot of, it's a series of uh, spiritual talks and uh, yeah. a way to get away from the world and get close to the Lord. So it's, they host those retreats. And that's how I got to know, that's how I got to know the Melkites because I was on Curcio and they, um, they had the divine liturgy there uh, mm. at, at their chapel. And so right. then, uh, yeah, they were like the, I don't know much about the history. I think the Melkites were something like the Greek Orthodox that somehow settled in Lebanon and they stayed with Rome while the other half of the Greek church went to schism or something like that. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So um, we only have 10 minutes left. So we will continue this um, very soon. So, yeah. So goodbye for now, and we'll be back very soon. Okay, see ya.
See ya. And we are back. So let's continue. Um, ah, here we are. Have you ever prayed the Psalms for 24 hours straight? No, but it's a good idea. Hmm. I should try it sometime. Yeah. So with your um, proposed Psalter, what are you planning? Are you planning on going through the Psalms, all the Psalms in one week, or? Uh, uh, what I propose is dividing up the Psalter uh, uh, by a week uh, so that it's prayed from Monday to Friday, the whole thing. So you got 25 each day. Yep. 25 times 5, uh, so I'm sorry, 25 times 7, uh, 150. Yeah. So, but, so what I would try to do is say uh, 25 on Monday, 25 on Tuesday, 25 on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, so basically on... 25 each day. Yeah. Um, so are there any breaks in between groups of Psalms or... Yeah, the way, because it's meant for people in the world, what I would do is say, spread them out any way you can. So let's just say uh, you have more time in the morning. So you'll probably do 10 in the morning and yep. then maybe three on your break. If you have a break in the mid morning uh, or three at our lunch break. And then uh, after you get off work, do another 10, 15 or do five, eat your dinner, do another five. So it's up to the individual how he wants to spread them out, but the end goal is to do at least 25 psalms per day, yep. Monday through Friday, and then uh, then to pray through all 150 between Saturday, Saturday vigil and Monday and uh, Monday midnight. So you would have what I try to do is do 25 Saturday evening. I'll do one to 25. And then the other 26 to 150 from midnight Sunday to midnight Monday. Yep. Very so nice. Spread them out. Yeah. If I, I usually spread them out according to the canonical hours on Sunday. I'll pray the liturgy of the hours and the, the additional 25 Psalms. Right. Yeah. I also like how um, the Byzantine and Sir uh, Maronite Psalters divide the Psalms as yeah. well. Yeah. Because I, I, with yeah, go ahead. yeah, with the Byzantine Psalter, it's just a chasm is just eight psalms. Yeah. But in that eight psalms, you have uh stasis, which are um breaks, uh, which are groups of two to three psalms each, and then right. you um break them up with glory both now and then alleluia, 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 glory to the O God three times, mm -hmm. and then you continue. Now what I try to do with this, I think I, I, the, I, uh, uh, an informal name I give this prayer is the uh, spiritual detox, hmm. spiritual detox, because my experience is that if you pray that many psalms for that long and you don't do anything else, as far as like you don't watch any secular media, you don't listen to trash, uh, just shut off all, all, the, all the trash and then do only the prayer of the Psalms, and then your daily routines, whatever your job is, uh, you will experience a sort of purification from our detox, detoxification from uh, uh, toxic thoughts, negative thoughts, right? Thoughts. Because now, when I uh, just the other day, I tried listening to some of the music I used to listen to as a teenager, some of the heavy metal, dark. Uh, yeah really really uh, nasty music uh yeah. i used to like when i was a teen uh and, and now when i when i listen to it now it makes me it makes me nauseous it makes me nauseous whereas before it used to be all i did it used to be my my, right. my obsession so because, basically yeah. okay let me continue are you are you saying that that music that you used to listen to is toxic well it seems toxic now after praying the songs for so long because back then i it was all i wanted but of course, I was I was anti-Catholic at the time. I was I was away from the church, right? You know, so it just it, you, you never realize just how sick you are until you uh, until you deprive yourself of the vices 
that you that you used to engage in, the devices that used to control you. You never realize how it's just like being on heroin. You not that I know. Thank God I don't know what that is like, but I can imagine it's 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 really 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 uh, uh, debilitating to have to stop and then get on some kind of a substitute like uh, what do they call it? Substitute methane. I forget what methadone, methadone, something like that. I'm not a very good pharmacist, but there's a there's a, a, a fake heroin that they give heroin addicts. So they think they're getting heroin, but it's actually not. So that's how they wean them off of it. But with uh, sin, it's it's even worse because you, a lot of the times you don't realize how addicted you are. Yeah. But it, when I started praying the the Psalms uh, and that and that high of a volume. Uh, the more I expose my mind only to yeah. the Psalms and not to trash, the, the more free I began to feel, the more uh, myself I began to feel, the more at peace. But it's, it's, a long, it's a long, difficult road, but it's well worth it because it makes you realize just how bad off you were. Yeah, and, um, right. Yeah. So, there's, so it's kind of like, this is probably what it was like for the desert, the early desert fathers who, yeah, they were out in the deserts. They had nothing else to do but to pray the Psalter or the scriptures and, or whatever they had. Uh, uh, and that's how we got the, the opus of work that we got from them because that's all they did. They, they uh, prayed the Psalms. Yeah. So it, has a, it has a purifying or purgative uh, element to it. It's not so much about the quantity, but about dosage. You know, I, yeah. I say... I need that kind of quantity because I think I, 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 I'm chief of the sinners. You know, we're all, we're all bad sinners. So we, we need to be purified. Yes. And that's the Psalms have that power. So does the rosary. So does other, you know, uh, inspired prayers, but the Psalms, because of the sheer volume of Psalms out there. And it's, it's just so much, so much more. I find it to be so rewarding. Yeah. And also, Talking about the Psalms, like Psalm 50 is such a um, <laughs> integral part of Byzantine and Syriac worship. Yep. When yep. Um, talking about the divine office, that you wouldn't be able to like not memorize it just from mm -hmm. like praying it once or twice. I mean, you gotta, you're basically praying it every day. So yeah, the it's, cops prayed every hour. Wow. The, yeah, the, every every liturgical hour they pray it. They start off with it. Yeah. Wow. And the in the Agbeya. Hmm. And you recently did an episode on that, actually. Yeah, I'm just about to post it. I had to um, I had to allow the interviewees to uh, view the video first and approve it. Uh, luckily, I did because they didn't like the fact that I called them leaders in my captions. I said that they were leaders in their community, but they preferred to be called servants. That they they said only Abuna is the leader uh, in their community. The priest is the only leader. So they they asked me to yeah, remove sure. that that term. So I have to go back and re-edit the caption in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you'll see it. You'll see it posted tonight. Yeah. It was uh, really uh, rewarding and. Uh, fruitful experience to meet with them yeah right i find that with the maronites as well because like there's only prayers that the priests are meant to pray and it's like um you gotta like of course for the kudobono you gotta have a priest and like in the traditional Maronite Kudobono, they used to um, pray psalms before the readings. Like I literally have my um, have my Maronite missile here, and it's like yeah, before the Epistle and Gospel, it has psalms as readings, but now it's basically just three standards of a hymn. But they used to pray the actual psalms. I think Psalm fifty was the uh, main one that they did. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, uh, Go ahead. Sorry. And yeah, it's um actually I'll show you this right here. So this I've got my um missile bookmark for the epistle and gospel, but if I turn back a page, then you'll see it literally says 
some of the reading. Yeah, but yeah. they they actually have a hymn in that place yeah. now, which I think um, the psalms should be restored to that place. Mm -hmm. Since the psalms have such an integral, like since they since they play such an integral role in mm -hmm. the divine liturgy and the office, that why would you just yeah. replace it with something else? You know. Yep. Yeah, I was I was surprised. I learned so many new things that you'll you'll discover on the interview. One of those, uh, one of the new pieces of information that I got was. They actually pray an Agpea before each liturgy. So let's just say the liturgy is at 7 a.m. They'll pray the Agpea for morning prayer uh, the first hour before the liturgy actually begins. So you've got the entire, uh, you, you'll pray up to 20 psalms before you actually start the liturgy. And that's another two hours of liturgy once, it, you know, after it's all said and done. So that's, I find that, you know, for the average person coming, I think that they would get, it would be too much at first. But when you, when you experience the spirit's presence in prayer once you can't get enough of it you can't you just keep longing for more and for more and so three hours eight hours out of liturgy is nothing because you realize you realize why you're there and what's going on yeah and i find that in the maronite tradition as well um because like the thing is with um saint shabbat monastery which i mentioned before they usually uh, pray matins before liturgy, and it's like, it's just so abbreviated. Like, they should do what the Benedictines do, where they just sing terse all the way through and then sing mass all the way through. Like, yeah, it I think did, they should did, do that. Yeah. Didn't you say that yeah, uh, Sharbel Hana is the one who actually compiled or created that timetable for praying the Psalms that... I sent yes. you. Okay. I actually, um, I actually have him on Facebook, and I literally asked him if uh, he did that, and, and he said, and he said, yes, that's from me. That's all. Yep. <laughs> oh well, because that that is really when I when I can when I have when I can stay up late enough, I love the way that's laid out. It's like he was he must have been totally inspired by the spirit when he did that because. Like you'll notice that at midnight, yeah, Monday, midnight Monday is where the highest volume of prayer is. He sets the, yeah. the largest number of psalms to midnight Monday. And that's usually when, at least in my own life, that's when I feel my most attacked. That's yeah, right. I feel like I need my Sunday night, Monday morning is usually when I'm my most anxious because I'm always worried about mm. the work week coming ahead. So it was really prescriptive for him to do that because it's like the perfect prescript spiritual uh prescription but um yeah yeah and other than doing that he actually also made a prayer book that's available on Lulu, which i'll leave a link to as well it's actually a um a maronite prayer book in french oh yeah Ooh la la. yeah like he told me that it's like translating it into French was complicated enough. I was like, I asked him, um, I wish I just told him, I wish there was an English version of this. And like, he told me translating it into French was complicated enough. So tell him that there's an American Benedictine oblate who's regularly praying his Maronite Psalter for dear life, that his Maronite Psalter is my, it's my boon and my, my, my sustenance. Yeah. Tell him that it changed my telling me tell him he directly changed my life, that guy. Wow. Last time you sent him a message. Seriously, yeah. because that changed everything. It changed yeah. everything. And it was the, it was his psalter that inspired me to create a uh, a more flexible layman psalter. It was him. And I now that I know who did it, that it's not some uh timetable that was established, I don't know, a thousand years ago. It's wh when did he do this? When did he create this uh, um psalter? I'm actually not sure. I'll, I'll have to ask him. Well, just tell him that there's someone who's actively promoting his Psalter because of yeah. how powerful it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, oh. <laughs> I had a problem. Lol? I thought, divine I interference. Know. I don't know what happened. 
That's weird. But the thing is, um, the um, the Maronite uh, common offices, the um, Shinto, is actually is actually reprinted now. You can get oh, yeah, the, yeah, and it's all in Syriac. But wow, like. I've actually got a copy coming and I will actually do a review of it um, when it comes. So yeah. please everyone just stay tuned for that. And yeah, so that also has a Psalter in the back, which is awesome. Yeah. So it's basically all 150 Psalms, but um, I, the only place that I've actually experienced Psalm 50 in the Mar Maronite office is Tuesday Compline because I, um, I've i sung it so many times over Discord. It's like, wow. Hmm. And it actually helps me with memorization as well because um, the hymn that actually goes along with it, um, it's actually like when you sing it a lot, it like when you do anything a lot, it just gets ingrained into your brain. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I keep saying. That's why I keep going. I, I mean, that's why I keep saying you've got to you've got to feed yourself the Psalms constantly because uh, this world will just eat you alive. Like, oh my gosh, are you saying that this world is like a zom a giant zombie? Symbolically, yes. Spiritually, yes. Wow, like, <laughs> and. It's like all the prayers that accompany the psalms in the office as well are very powerful. Yeah, indeed. Like I, I like one specific prayer from the. Um, it's not from the Maronite office, but it's actually from the uh, Malankara Orthodox um, offices. Um, which is awesome. Like, I actually um, have a copy. Let me see. Here we are. It's um, this is really powerful. Like, it's basically the concluding prayer at um, most of the hours in the Malankara Orthodox. O Lord Jesus Christ, do not close the door of your mercy in our faces. We confess that we are sinners. Have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, you love, uh, your love made you descend to us from your place, that by your death our death might be abolished. Have mercy upon us. I mean, that, like, after, after all the psalms and the hymns, like, that is just powerful. Yeah. Usually, um, the distribution of the psalms in um, the Malankara or Orthodox office is, um, of course, they'll have Psalm 50, um, but they'll have other Psalms. Like, I think one of the hours that it has Psalm 113. Um, I can't remember which one, though. I think it's most of them. But they, they, they pray in Hindi, right? Um, so in their office, um, it used to be the case where Psalms and hymns alternated, but um, they don't do that anymore. It's a specifically Maronite tradition now. Hmm. So you'll have like at um at matins on Thursday, I think it is. You'll have um hymn verses interpolated between the verses of the Magnificat. Actually, not a psalm, but. You get it, like psalm hymn, psalm hymn, like that cycle just goes on for how yeah. many psalms and hymns there are. Um, all right. Um, how many psalm tones have you written? I lost some. I would start, and then uh, as far as complete, I want to say. I've got about three Asian tones. I don't know, maybe Asian is too uh, provincial sounding. Uh, two, three pentatonic uh, out of five. My goal is to have five pentatonic psalm tones uh, ready for use pretty soon. I'm going to uh, post 
a PDF of the notated tones pretty soon. Nice. But I've got about three completed that I've posted videos of, and then I've got like two, what I call uh, three to five uh, temple tones that are based on the an ancient Jewish scale that that dates back to the temple period. Yeah. Yeah. And then I even um, I started composing an a cappella mass uh, for sing for solo voice. I, I try to keep it as simple as possible so that way anybody could start singing it whether it's in the jungle somewhere without electricity. Uh, I, I have the Gloria already published through a website called Modern Psalter. And I use the traditional uh, Jewish temple scale. Uh, right. the, the, tech, the, the music theory, the, the musical uh, theoretical term for it is the Phrygian, Phrygian scale. It's very common in the Middle East. But, yeah. Um, I started the, I finished the Gloria of that mass, but I never got any further because of life circumstances. But that's about all I've done. I've done a few settings of the Psalms to uh, melodic settings of the Psalms that I published through a group, uh, an online apostolate called Modern Psalter. Uh, but I usually only use the, the medieval church modes when I compose. The yeah. Medieval, uh, Lydian, Phrygian, all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, my goal is to have. I want to get the five oriental uh, pentatonic tones done pretty soon. And when I publish uh, a timetable of the, the, uh, the, the simplified Psalter that I'm working on, I'll have those tones also there. So in case people want to use them because pentaton the pentatonic scale is it's universal. It's in every culture has it. So I wanted to make it universal to where anybody, whether they're from Kenya or Vietnam can, uh, relate to the tonality yeah of those tones you know right yeah it makes sense um so that's one of my projects for this summer holiday yeah me like i'm also thinking of um like based off um your idea of creating salter i'm also thinking of doing one as well Go for it. um so yeah i will um talk about it in an upcoming video so yeah, yeah after, we're starting a, move, a movement yeah like you i have to um i have to test it out first yeah yeah so i'm gonna um you're doing 25 um psalms a day what i'm thinking i'm gonna do 20 but i will um i'll basically break them up yeah yeah like you could you could do like um one group of five and then uh glory to the father and then continue um so that's what i'm thinking but i just gotta i just gotta test it out before uh before i actually um like promote it you know yeah yeah pray on it first i'm still praying on mine i'm Sometimes I think maybe I'm just over, uh, that's overkill. I mean, there's so many soldiers already out there, but what I'm just offering is a, a quick and easy way to just pick up a Bible and start enjoy, uh, it, reaping the benefits of praying the Psalter in, in an organized fashion. I mean, yeah, it, it, because it's flexible, it's, it's 25 Psalms a day, doesn't mean it has to be 25 in one flow. I like to do 25 in one sitting because. I just need that high of a dose. I'm that bad of a sinner. But, and it works best if I do it after evening prayer. So I'll pray evening prayer, then I'll go through the 25 Psalms. By the time I'm finished, I just feel totally renewed. It's like I've been yeah. on detox, you know? And, uh, but if, if, if there's not enough time to do that, then I'll just do a few in the morning, a few at Terrace, a few at Sex. And it, it's actually not that hard to do. If you spread them out, it's like five Psalms per prayer five psalms per uh, liturgical hour if you go from yeah 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 um how do you think of the melodies for all your psalm terms they could be better just it's always it's 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 always a development process development process it's always a a growing a growing experience you never stop growing but i'd say that i i, I like how accessible they are uh people have told me that I had one guy tell me that he actually wrote, uh, he, he, he arranged the mass part to one of my temple tones. I thought that was pretty cool. 
Uh, awesome. But, yeah. But I think I really, I really would like to promote the pentatonic right now because the pentatonics, the pentatonic scale is uh, uh, a way for us to really appreciate, especially Asian musical tradition because the, uh, yes, the pentatonic scale is available around the world, but uh, the, particularly the, the Asian communities have developed the pentatonic music to a degree that others haven't, and they still continue to do so. So yeah, uh, we need to hear more of that, I think, because it seems to me like it's just under underexposed. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing it, because I want people to really experience the beauty of monophonic, pentatonic chant. Yeah, true. Monophonic. So, and I, I mean, I'd love to hear how it sounds in Asian language, like how would the Vietnamese song sound using my psalm tones in pentatonic scales? How would, how would it sound in Mandarin? How would it sound in, uh, I guess I know how it would sound in Indonesian because I know enough Indonesian to try it myself. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see how I definitely sounds. I definitely try it in Vietnamese sometime. Like I know that um, like the, the main body of monks in Vietnam are Cistercians and so, They've actually uh, developed a bunch of psalm tones um, yeah. and adapted it for Vietnamese, which is cool. Awesome. That's beautiful. That's what we need because you know, the, there, there's just such a, a treasure trove of music that people in the West don't even know about because it's just not exposed yet. Yeah. And, and, and people, go ahead. I think. Um, Another, um, another mission that I have, um, I think what God's calling me to do is actually, um, like other than uh, promoting the Maronite church in general, like I think um, promoting their, um, their music and chant tradition as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that's coming out. Uh, yeah. Thanks to one of the blessings and uh, one of the, we often talk about the curses of social media, but one of the blessings is that mm -hmm. uh, it's so much easier to discover these different liturgical traditions now than it used to be. True. You know, like I, I can literally make a, a virtual pilgrimage to Ethiopia to learn about Ethiopian liturgy without leaving my home. That's the beauty of, of uh, having oh. YouTube. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. So yeah, a lot of things in the works. Uh, it's kind of mm. hard because uh, you know, I have my number one vocation is uh, father and husband so uh but this is what i do when i'm not when i'm not fulfilling those roles this is my my passion so i, I might i might actually go ahead and finish those the rest of those tones tonight they're not that difficult you've inspired me to get get off my lazy rump yeah and, uh, get it and yeah we've actually like before this we've actually discussed um about praying the maronite soldier like um, have you ever tried, um, like praying the um, Midnight Office songs all in one go? You mean like uh, when you say Midnight Office, are you talking about an office apart from Martins? Because when I yeah. think Midnight Office, I think Martins. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, as I said now, um, Dan, like I told you that um, in the East, they actually have. A separate midnight office matins is that um like in the byzantine tradition matins is the most complex service yeah because you've got a lot of hypnography that you have to um piece together right and even in even in syriac Mar uh, syriac maronite tradition especially yeah. like um, you can't even, like, unless you order a Shimto or something, like, you can't have all the offices in full. Yeah, I have prayed the midnight office uh, in the Akpea. I've prayed the midnight prayers of the Akpea already. In English, though. I've actually prayed the, um, the Byzantine midnight office. I'll show you. I've got the, um, the Anthologian here. It's a new, um, new publication. Um, from yep. St. Ignatius Orthodox Press, which has an abbreviated version of all the Byzantine offices. Yep. And the Midnight Office, um, like 
I'll literally show you. I've got the uh, Midnight Office bookmark, but I can't remember which one it is. Um, it's like so long because it's got a bunch of Psalms. Ah, here we are. It's got a bunch of Psalms. Like, what on earth? <laughs> like, if I go to Saturday morning, you've of course got like your usual beginning, the Trisagian prayers and stuff like that. Then you get straight into Psalm 50, 65, um, 66. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Um, 68. This is going to be crazy. 69. And then you get to the Creed, uh, Trisagian prayers once again. Then, uh, then you have um, all your hymnography after. So um, after that, you've got Psalm 120, 133, and then you've got more hymnography. And it's crazy because the Midnight Office is literally just Psalms. Like all the all the Midnight Offices start with um start with Psalm 50. Wow. Like, oh my goodness. And I'll send you um a chart that um that has all the numbering from the uh Masoretic numbering, Septuagint numbering, and uh Peshitta numbering so that you know the differences. Because the Peshitta uh, Maronite ones, it actually has a mix of the Masoretic numbering and the Septuagint numbering. Yeah, I noticed that in uh, the Maronite sulfur that I shared with you, they have brackets uh, for the different numberings. Uh, so yeah. we'll play what we would, what, what the West would consider one psalm. They might actually break up the three different uh, pieces, three different sections. Yeah. And even in the Byzantine Psalter, like um, Psalm 118, it's literally its own cathisma because it's that long. Yeah. Like it's yeah. broken up into three stasis itself because it's that long. Like what on earth? Because usually, um, I think I've said this already, but cathisma usually contains eight psalms, um, eight shorter psalms, and then um, you've got the stasis, which are um, groups of three. Yeah. Then, uh, so um, with some, with uh, the first chrysisma, which is usually sung at um, Saturday evening vespers, you'll have Psalms one, two, and three as one stasis, and then you will break it up with glory breath now, and then you'll continue four, five, six. Uh, I think four, five, six, seven, maybe. Uh, I can't remember, but there's um, towards the end, the Stasis only has two Psalms, is what I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's because it's a group of eight Psalms. So That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. In the, um, as you've noticed in um, Shabel Hannah's table, it's it's also broken up into like groups of psalms as well. Um yep. we say doxology in between, like the Byzantine Psalter. So it's very similar, actually. Yeah, yeah the Maronite, uh, I, it's a, it's almost miraculous how I got exposed to that Maronite Psalter. I was actually just I was in, I was in that Facebook group on the Divine Office and yeah, I, I I posted a question: Has anybody ever tried to pray all psalms in one day? And then some, a lot of people are like, no, that's so extreme. Why would anybody do that? Oh, I should try that sometime. That's awesome. And then somebody said, uh, this, the, these monks pray it every day. And so he showed, he sent uh, an image file of that Psalter. And it, that's where, that's when everything began to go up a whole new level for me once I tried doing it that way. So tell, tell uh, Hannah that uh, his uh, table of Psalms is changing a lot of lives right now. Yeah, even me, because like, what on earth that, um, like the midnight office alone, it's like, 
50. Uh, it's, it's, it's like it's like 40 to 50 songs. Uh, the, the yep. midnight office. Yeah. It's like, wow. And okay, I think we'll have to end here because um, even now we only have 10 minutes. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching everyone to support me and Victor further. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this video and all the videos of both of our channels. So thank you and God bless.